There's things that I really don't care about. I don't have a nice fancy car. We live in a very modest one bedroom apartment here in Vancouver. This has literally been such a game changer for my finances. And I'm here to tell you that credit cards are good when they're used properly. I have just booked my direct Paris flight with just credit card points. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are talking about the five personal finance lessons that I learned that changed my financial trajectory. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Riza. I do these personal finance videos. So if you like the vibe and the energy around here, please stick around. So all of the lessons that I'm talking about in this video actually come from this book, which is I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. I got this book, I want to say in 2021, I listened to it on Audible and I have re-listened to this audiobook so many times. I want to say like five to eight times since the first time I listened to it because I'm able to like pick up different lessons every single time I read it. If you've never heard of it or you haven't read it before, I highly, highly recommend it. I know that there are so many other popular finance books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Think and Grow Rich, The Psychology of Money. All of those books I also really, really love, but Ramit's book, I Will Teach You to Be Rich, is really different because it gives you practical, actionable tools and advice that you can implement for your own personal finance. So lesson number one is to create a conscious spending plan. And really what this means is having a plan for your paychecks. Every two weeks, I usually have a plan ahead of time before the money even hits my bank account to know exactly where the money from my paycheck will go for that specific pay. So let me show you guys what I mean. If you watched my last video, I did a payday routine and I kind of showed you guys the Notion tracker that I use. So my tracker looks like this. Every single paycheck, I account for all of the different categories that I need to pay for and ensure that everything is covered into my budget. So today is April 14th, we actually got paid today and I created this conscious spending plan for this specific pay a few days ago and I made sure that my credit cards are taken care of, I have my savings and any emergency funds taken care of and anything else that I need to pay like my rent. Um, I'm also paying for a content creator. So. All of these things are accounted for in this budget tracker in Notion. And having this allows me to know exactly what is happening with my paycheck because in the past, what I've done is the money hits my account and then not having a spending plan, I think of all of the different materialistic things that I want to buy and then I go spend money on that, which doesn't really help you in the future because you're not investing for your retirement, you're not saving for emergencies. Having a conscious spending plan will really help with making sure that you are achieving your financial goals and you're saving and investing for the things that you want for your life. So a lot of the times people ask me like, oh, how are you able to afford designer handbags? Literally because I have a conscious spending plan. As you can see, I have a 30th birthday sinking fund and I do this so that when the time comes and I want to treat myself for my birthday, I feel zero guilt about spending that money because I know that I have paid my rent, contributed to my emergency fund, contributed to my investing and my retirement. So having a spending plan like this one or however you want to do it, I think will be key for your finances. The next lesson that I learned from the book is to automate your finances. This has literally been such a game changer for my finances and I've only recently done this. So I have my emergency fund through NEO. NEO has the functionality to automatically take from your checking and put it straight into your emergency fund. So whichever bank that you're using to put your emergency fund in, I believe most banks have this now. I highly recommend automating your finances in this way. You don't have to like think about putting money into those places because it automatically gets pulled out. So you kind of have like no choice but to save that money or invest that money. And I think sometimes that can be a little bit scary because we want to have autonomy with our money, 
especially when it's payday and you've worked really hard and you want to treat yourself a little bit. So if you're feeling like, oh, I really want that money for myself and I want to choose if and when you, I want to invest, I think that maybe starting with a smaller amount that you auto invest and auto save might help you. So currently I auto invest $200 in my Wealth Simple trading account and $200 into my emergency fund. I also have $300 automatically going into my 30th birthday sinking fund. So that is a lot for me. Like that's $700 out of $2,300 of my pay. And I think I'm being like really strict with myself and being really disciplined. This is the most amount of money I've auto allocated from my checking account. And yeah, it felt really scary to do that in the beginning of this year, but I knew I had certain goals. So I want to have $20,000 in my emergency fund by the end of December. And to do that, I needed $200 automatically taken out of my biweekly paycheck. I have a certain goal or amount that I want to hit in my Wealth Simple account, and I decided $200 was the biweekly amount that I felt comfortable with. So if you feel like you want to start small, do that, but build the habit of auto investing and auto saving. The third lesson that I learned is to optimize your credit cards. I know, I know, we have heard so many people say that credit cards are bad, don't use credit cards, and I'm here to tell you that credit cards are good when they're used properly. I have just booked my direct Paris flight with just credit card points, and that is typically a $900 flight from Vancouver to Paris. So I think that if you're smart with credit cards, I definitely think that you can use them to your advantage. The thing that I would caution is that if you are prone to overspending or if you have a ton of debt, maybe try to get that in control first before diving into credit cards. But once you feel like you are in a good state with your finances, I do think that credit cards can help. I personally have the American Express Cobalt card and I think that it is the best credit card for everyday purchases. So I use it a lot for eating out, groceries, some shopping, and I think a myth with American Express is that not everyone takes American Express. I wanna say 99% of places that I go to here in Vancouver take American Express. If you're looking for a recommendation, that's the one that I would personally recommend, but please do your research. The fourth lesson that I learned from this book is spend extravagantly on the things that you love and cut costs mercilessly on the things that you don't. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite thing that I learned from this book. I recently put out a video about feeling guilty about spending on a really expensive watch that I want to buy when I go to Paris. But if I think about that and this lesson from the book of spending extravagantly on the things that you love, for me, watches, designer handbags, and cutting costs mercilessly on the things that you don't, it means that you are putting your money on the things that you really care about. And there's things that I really don't care about. I don't have a nice fancy car. We live in a very modest one bedroom apartment here in Vancouver. Like there are things that I just wouldn't spend my money on. And there are things that I would. So that totally depends on the person. Let me know down in the comments below like what your thing is for me, designer handbags and right now a Cartier watch. I think this lesson just really helps prove that you should not feel guilty, especially if you're someone who is investing and saving consistently and you have your finances in check and you wanna treat yourself every now and then, do that. In that last video, you guys made me feel so not alone in that feeling of having to justify buying things that you love with your hard earned money. So thank you for that. I read every single comment of yours and I appreciate you all commenting. It really felt like we're building this community of like-minded people and it really, really warms my heart to read all of your comments. So thank you so much for that. And the final lesson that I learned from this book is to start an emergency fund. So I think that this is the advice that most personal finance YouTubers give you, but it's also the easiest one to ignore. 
And the reason I think is because a lot of us want to save for a certain type of thing. So we want to save up for vacation, for retirement, to invest money, but to actually save for something that is unknown, like an emergency, it feels like that's not where we want to put our money. But trust me when I say that this has really, really, really changed the way that I think about money and my life. I started my emergency fund in 2022 in January. I started with nothing, zero dollars. And today, let's check how much is in there. Today, we are just shy of $15,000 in my emergency fund. So I have been putting money into that every single month. I think last year I did $100 every single bi-weekly paycheck. I also did some lump sum deposits in there when I had extra money. And this year I'm putting $200 every single bi-weekly paycheck. So I am aggressively putting money into my emergency fund. And the reason why I'm so bullish on my emergency fund is because of a feeling that I get when I build this up. So what I mean is that when my emergency fund was non-existent, I didn't really have a backup plan. So knock on wood, I get laid off from my job and I don't have a backup plan. It means that I immediately have to start looking for a job literally the next day. And it doesn't give me any sort of like breathing room or time to just think about like, do I wanna get back into the nine to five? Do I want to do something else? Like I am not granted that time to just think and breathe because I didn't have an emergency fund back then. So now because I have $15,000 as a buffer, that is at least like three to four months of my living expenses covered. If anything like that happens or I need to go pay for a really big expense that is unknown, like I didn't plan for it, then I have the money already. I won't have to dip into my investments. I won't have to dip into my RRSPs. I am just able to take it from this account, which is basically liquid. I would need to just transfer it into my checking account and I'm able to pay for that. My goal is to have $20,000 in my emergency fund and that should give me about six to seven months of living expenses covered in case anything happens. And I would feel so good if I am able to achieve that goal. So those are the five best personal finance tips that I learned from this book. Again, if you have not picked up this book, I highly, highly recommend it. I think that you're able to get at least something out of this book that will help you towards your financial goals. And if you haven't already, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you like the vibe around here. And wherever you are, I hope that you have an amazing day. Bye guys.